Worried About Worry. Written and performed by James Arnold Taylor. With the additional voice of Lydia Rose Taylor. There once was a little fellow named Worry. And it was an apt name at that. Worry worried more than anyone could. In fact, that made him worry all the more. He worried about breakfast. He worried about lunch. He worried about dinner. He even worried about midday snacks. He worried about what to wear. That is, if he actually wore anything. For you see, worry was simply a bundle of, well, worry and nothing more. Held together by the past and future worries, while never really concentrating on the present, as that would, uh, yes, that's right, worry him. So worry worried. He worried about what people thought of him, what he thought of them. He worried about being late. He worried about being early. He worried that being on time may even be too exact for others and bother them, which worry wouldn't want to do at all. I mean, just think of it and worry. Worry, simply put, if you have not already guessed, worried about anything and everything, and when he was done worrying about it all, he'd worry some more, just to be sure. One day, while Worry was sitting under a big willow tree, he liked the willow because it sounds a bit like worry, but not too much like it, that would be worrisome and perhaps confusing. But, but let us not bring his cousin confusing into this story. Anyway, where was I at? Ah, not to worry, I remember. While sitting under that big willow, Worry was worrying about the weather. Would it be hot or would it be cold? And if it's cold, would it be too cold or could it be too hot? He worried, he didn't know which was worse. Then suddenly, he saw a figure coming towards him. And this, goes without saying, was worrying. Our worrisome worrier. I wonder who that is. Oh, what if it's someone I know? What will I say to him? How will I start a conversation? Oh, oh great, yeah. What if we both start to talk at the same time? That's always a possibility. And then there's the confusion and talking over each other and, oh, the worry. But wait, what if it's a stranger? Oh, well, that's all the more reason to worry. If they're mean, they may say or do mean things to me, but if they're nice, they may say nice things to me, and I'll need to find just the right nice things to say back to them, and... Oh, or they may say nice things to simply be nice and not really tell me how they really feel about me, yeah. Or if they even feel anything about me at all. Oh, what a worry this approaching character brings! The sun was behind this foreboding figure, so only a dark silhouette was visible to worry. So he squinted his eyes as tightly as he could to where they were almost shut, but not quite. Just enough to still see the imminent interloper, but not enough to make out who they were. This seemed the sensible thing to do for someone that worries so. You see, then he could still see them, but not see them enough to know as to avoid a new worry and stay focused on the worry at hand. This worry is safer, it seems, as it doesn't let anyone else in, it, which could be a bigger mistake than letting them out. Oh, the worry. But now, as the being drew closer, squinting couldn't help his ears from hearing. Singing. Songs from this dark and dreadful apparition? Was it a happy or melancholy tune? Best not to listen, thought worry, and he quickly covered his ears using the palms of his hands. He would have much rather stuck his fingers in his ears to plug them tightly, but he hadn't had the chance to wash his hands since seeing this ominous offering and the thought of perhaps spreading germs into his ears that could result in an infection or perhaps a nasty head cold brought a new worry to the table for Worry A. Worrywart. Oh, yes, had I forgot to mention Worry's full name? Terribly sorry. Worrywart was his last name, but he much preferred the first half of the last name to the last half, as warts are an ugly and worrisome thing. Oh, but let me proceed so as not to worry you as to what was on the horizon for worry. Now this singing was gaining in volume and distance, and the words were almost clear through his trembling hands and right into his ears, and that worried worry. What if the song was one that he knew, and then it might get stuck in his head? Oh, worrying is a long and difficult task, but alas, worry was an expert, and that brought him some comfort. But is comfort good? Worry thought, and began to worry. It may not be. 
The singing began to break through, and then his ever-squinting eyes began to grow weary of all the squinting, and so he opened them, as he feared that long-time fable that if he kept them squinted for too long, they would get stuck. And this goes without saying, is a worry for certain. As he opened his eyes with worrisome wonder, he saw to his surprise, not a dark, dastardly devil at all. Instead, he saw a small little gal with pretty pink pleats and a perfectly pressed dress. On this dress she wore were little red roses lightly embossed in lace on the bottom and hearts on the top. She wore sneakers that glittered and tights with socks that seemed to match perfectly though somehow seemed off. Her hair was dark but had a glow of gold. It was drawn up in pigtails and her makeup was ever so perfectly so. Her eyes were bright with blue or were they brown? Or green, perhaps? Uh, hazel? They seemed to change each time worry looked. She had a huge smile and her teeth sparkled with what looked like little stars when the light hit them just right. Worry hoped the lights wouldn't damage his vision. After all, what would he do if he couldn't see all of his worries? But as he looked at this strange slender vision, who seemed quite content, he felt for a split second, or perhaps even less, a strange feeling come over him that made worry, worry about not worrying. Hello! Sang the girl with the pigtails and pleats. My name is Presently, would you believe? I'd like to know yours. It'd be a pleasure to receive. Well, now let us go into the mind of our little worrying friend and see if we can see what he was trying to comprehend. She doesn't seem mean. She doesn't seem sad. She doesn't even seem the slightest bit mad. She sings every word that comes out of her mouth. I wonder what happens when she whines or she pouts. Though those don't seem likely for a girl like this. Perhaps it could happen. Perhaps I'll persist. And what's with this rhyming and matching of words? I worry a worry wart have become quite perturbed. From this point on, our tale doth rhyme. Don't ask me to stop it. There just isn't time. Uh, my name is Worry. Worry wart's my name. How wonderful to meet you. I'm glad that I came. But Worry was worried that this might be a ploy to take away something that he'd had since a boy. He wasn't quite sure it made him quite miffed. When presently spoke, his worry would lift. She didn't seem bothered by things in the past, and the thought of the future, why to her, it's too vast. Her name was the way that she lived and she breathed. She wasn't just presently. She was presently pleased. And presently, please spoke up as she danced and spoke with a song and a sweet happenstance. You say your name's Worry, but I wonder, my friend, is Worry a part of your day start and end? If so, how is it that you'd worry that much? I find life delightful. I find it just such. Such what? Worried Worry. Why, how could it be that someone could live without any worry? That's troublesome, naive, preposterous, too. Living without worry? Well, what would you do? Excuse me, asked Worry. I beg your dear pardon, but how could you not feel worry in this garden? There's flowers and grass to make you sneeze. There's birds and begonias. Heaven knows that there's bees. All of these things could sting or infect. I beg you, sweet presently, why don't you object? There's so much to worry about right here and right now. I fear that you must be overtaken somehow by madness or perhaps if something far darker... For one not to worry is a very present marker. For safety's sake, let me worry for you. It's easy for me. It's just what I do. But presently, simply smiled. She knew that she knew so much more than he, and she knew what to do to bring change to worry. She took his worried hand. She gave it a kiss. She lifted his arms and held on at his wrists. She stepped back and forth and made him follow suit. He may not have known it. But he was dancing to boot. She gently hummed and stared in his eyes, which at first made worry worry, but then, surprise, when her eyes locked with his, there was something sure and true. Worry felt peace, and an odd calming, too. She said softly, Now. And that was all that it took for worry to let go of the worry he forsook. He felt a great love, and strangely nothing more. He knew this was all that feelings were for. To live and to feel, to love and to laugh, to never let go of the presently path. 
His worry was gone, his fears laid low. He knew in that moment that his worry must go. Be gone for good, yes, that's what he'd need, but how? Oh, how could his worry not feed? Was it magic, a spell? Did she have him deceived? Was his worry really leaving? Could he really believe? How could this presently relieve all his fears? By showing him laughter and joy and good cheers? He tried to ask her, but she simply danced and hummed while she held him. Yes, it felt like a trance, but not one that would hurt or one to destroy. Then worry began remembering what he took on as a boy. All the pressure, the pain, the anger and shame, all the fear and the dread, and of course, all the blame. Yes, all of these things became a part of the lad, who wanted to live life and feel happiness clad. But just as we learn to walk, then to run, our feelings can alter, they can become undone. We manage to believe that we're not who we are. We take on the lies that insist we're not far. From being those dreadful and terrible things, alas, they're not true. Not what happiness brings. We believe that it's easier to worry and fear. We believe it's far better, but it's perfectly clear. Our lives don't matter, not one little bit. So yes, it's much easier to worry, and that's it. Oh, how far worry strayed from his real true self. He listened to those lies and put love on the shelf. So he pondered it all as she held him that day, and he hoped it was real. He prayed it might stay. As he danced and she hummed, he began humming too. He wanted to know how to feel presently true. Yes, this was the feeling, this was the time. Life's not meant for worry, life's meant for divine. All that we carry and all that we claim should not be a burden, should not be our name. He began to speak, but only came tears. Not of worry this time, nor of dark, endless fears. He let it happen. Yes, he enjoyed this emotion. He felt no worry, he felt a new notion. One to become at peace with himself and to give a new name. One of goodness and health. He asked without worry what presently thought. He didn't overthink it. He didn't act caught. He allowed the present moment to wash over him well. And as this was happening, his worry did quell. Just then, presently smiled her biggest smile yet, like the pink, blue, and gold of a perfect sunset. She showed worry love. She showed it quite deep. She showed worry that worry was nothing to keep. And as she stared presently into his ever-changing eyes, she said, You are new. Now live life's surprise. As the worry dropped out of his mind's norm, there was quite a change in his physical form. He took on a brightness. He stood up quite straight. His body began moving with a presently gait. He seemed clothed in goodness, in sincere, honest truth. He looked nothing like worry. From his feet past his tooths. Though his eyes were still honest, they now clearly shined, for no longer was there an honest worry on his mind. So worry a worry won't give up worry that day, and presently speaking, he's much happier, I'd say. He forgets and he stumbles, he makes some mistakes, but now when he does, he doesn't return to old traits. He stops, takes a moment, and looks at it anew. For he knows there's very little that all that worry can do.